You're watching the History File channel. In this video, we're looking at the Normandy landings. The Normandy landings were the landing operations and associated airborne operations on Tuesday, the 6th of June, 1944, of the Allied invasion of Normandy in Operation Overlord during World War II. Codenamed Operation Neptune, and often referred to as D-Day, it is the largest seaborne invasion in history. The operation began the liberation of France and the rest of Western Europe and laid the foundations of the Allied victory on the Western Front. Planning for the operation began in 1943. In the months leading up to the invasion, the Allies conducted a substantial military deception codenamed Operation Bodyguard. This was to mislead the Germans as to the date and location of the main Allied landings. The weather on the day selected for D-Day was not ideal and the operation had to be delayed 24 hours. A further postponement would have meant a delay of at least two weeks as the planners had requirements for the phase of the moon, the tides and time of day. That meant only a few days each month were deemed suitable. Adolf Hitler placed Field Marshal Erwin Rommel in command of German forces and developing fortifications along the Atlantic Wall. This was in anticipation of an invasion. US President Franklin D. Roosevelt placed Major General Dwight D. Eisenhower in command of the Allied forces. The invasion began shortly after midnight on the morning of June the 6th with extensive aerial and naval bombardment, as well as an airborne assault. The landing of 24,000 American, British and Canadian airborne troops. The early morning aerial assaults were soon followed by Allied amphibious landings on the coast of France. The target 50 mile stretch of Normandy coast was divided into five sectors Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. Strong winds blew the landing craft east of their intended, intended positions, particularly at Utah and Omaha. The men landed under heavy fire from gun emplacements overlooking the beaches and the shore was mined and covered with obstacles such as wooden stakes, metal tripods and barbed wire, making the work of the beach clearing teams difficult and dangerous. Casualties were heaviest at Omaha, with its high cliffs. At Gold, Juno and Sword, several fortified towns were cleared in house-to-house -house fighting, and two major gun emplacements at Gold were disabled and using specialised tanks. The Allies failed to achieve any of their major goals beyond the establishment of the beachheads on the first day. Carentan, saint Law, and Bayou remained in German hands and Caen, a major objective, was not captured until the 21st of July. Only two of the beaches, Juno and Gold, were linked on the first day, and all five beachheads were not connected until the 12th of June. However, the operation gained a foothold that the Allies gradually expanded over the coming months. German casualties on D-Day have been estimated at around 4,000 to 9,000 men. Allied casualties were documented for at least 10,000, with 4,414 confirmed dead. After the German army invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941, the Soviet leader, Joseph Stalin, began pressing his new allies for the creation of a second front in the west of Europe. In late May 1942, the Soviet Union and the United States made a joint announcement that a full understanding was reached with regard to the urgent tasks of creating a second front in Europe in 1942. 
However, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill persuaded US President Franklin D. Roosevelt to postpone the promised invasion, as even with US help, the Allies did not have adequate forces for such an activity. Instead of an immediate return to France, the Western Allies staged offensives in the Mediterranean theatre of operations, where British troops were already stationed. By mid-1943, the campaign in North Africa had been won. The Allies then launched the invasion of Sicily in July 1943 and subsequently invaded the Italian mainland in September of the same year. By then, the Soviet forces were on the offensive and had won a major victory at the Battle of Stalingrad. The decision to undertake a cross-channel of invasion within the next year was taken at the Trident Conference in Washington in May 1943. Initial planning was constrained by the number of available landing craft, most of which were already committed in the Mediterranean and the Pacific. At the Tehran Conference in November 1943, Roosevelt and Churchill promised Stalin that they would open the long-delayed Second Front in May 1944. The Allies considered four sites for the landings, Brittany, the Contentin Peninsula, Normandy and the Pas de Calais. As Brittany and Continent are peninsulas, it would have been impossible for for the Germans to cut off the Allied advance at a relatively narrow isthmus. So these sites were rejected. With the Pas de Calais being the closest point in continental Europe to Britain, the Germans considered it to be the most likely initial landing zone, so it was the most heavily fortified region. But it offered few opportunities for expansion, as the area is bounded by numerous rivers and canals whereas landing, landing on a broad front in Normandy would permit simultaneous threats against the port of Cherbourg, coastal ports further west in Brittany, and an overland attack towards Paris and eventually into Germany. Normandy was hence chosen as the landing site. The most serious drawback of the Normandy coast was the lack of port facilities but this would be overcome through the development of artificial Mulberry harbours. A series of mo modified tanks named Hobart's Funnies dealt with the specific requirements expected for the Normandy campaign, such as mine clearing, demolishing bunkers and mobile bridging. The Allies planned to launch the invasion on the 1st of May 1944. The initial draft of the plan was accepted at the Quebec Conference in August 1943. General Dwight D. Eisenhower was appointed commander of the Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force. General Bernard Montgomery was named commander of the 21st Army Group, which comprised all land forces involved in the invasion. On the 31st of December 1943, Eisenhower and Montgomery first saw the plan which proposed amphibious landings by three divisions, with two more divisions in support. The two generals insisted that the scale of the initial invasion be expanded to five divisions, with airborne descents by three additional divisions to allow for operations on a wider front and to hasten the capture of Cherbourg. The need to acquire, a pro a, the need to acquire or produce extra landing craft for the expanded operation meant that the invasion had to be delayed to June. Eventually, the 39 Allied divisions would be committed to the Battle of Normandy. 22 American, 12 British, 3 Canadian, 1 Polish and 1 French, totalling over a million troops. Operation Overlord was the name assigned to the establishment of a large-scale lodgement on the continent. The first phase, the amphibious invasion and the establishment of a secure foothold, was codenamed Operation Neptune. To gain the air superiority needed to ensure a successful invasion, the Allies undertook a bombing campaign codenamed Operation Point Blank. 
that targeted at German aircraft production, fuel, supplies and airfields. Elaborate deceptions, codenamed Operation Bodyguard, was undertaken in the months leading up to the invasion to prevent the Germans from learning the timing and the location of the invasion. The landings were to be preceded by airborne operations near Khan on the eastern flank to secure the Orne River bridges and north of Carrington on the western flank. The Americans assigned to land at Utah Beach and Omaha Beach were to attempt to capture Carrington and St. Law. The first day then cut off the continent and peninsula and eventually captured the port facilities at Cherbourg. The British at Sword and Gold Beaches and the Canadians at Juneau Beach would protect the US flank and attempt to establish airfields near Khan on the first day. A sixth beach, codenamed Band, was considered to be the least of the Orne. The secure lodgment would be establishment with all invading forces linked together with an attempt to hold all territory north of the Orange Falise line within the first three weeks. Montgomery envisaged a 90-day battle lasting until Allied forces reached the river saying, Under the overall umbrella of Operation Bodyguard, the Allies conducted several subsidiary operations designed to mislead the Germans as to the date and location of the Allied landings. Operation Fortitude included Fortitude North, a misinformation campaign using fake radio traffic to lead the Germans into expecting an attack on Norway. And Fortitude South, a major deception involving the creation of a fictitious 1st United States Army Group under Lieutenant General George S. Patton, supposedly located in Kent and Sussex. Fortitude South was intended to deceive the Germans into believing that the main attack would take place at Calais. Genuine radio messages from the 21st Army Group were first routed to Kent via landline and then broadcast to give the Germans the impression that most of the Allied troops were stationed there. Patton was stationed in England until the 6th of July, thus continuing to deceive the Germans into believing a second attack would take place at Calais. Many of the German radar stations on the French coast were destroyed in preparation for the landings. In addition, on the night before the invasion, a small group of special air service operators deployed dummy paratroopers over Le Havre and Insigny. These dummies led the Germans to believe that an additional airborne landing had occurred. On that same night, in Operation Taxable, No. 617 Squadron, RAF, dropped strips of window metal foil that caused a radar return which would mistakenly be interpreted by German radar operators as a naval convoy near Le Havre. The illusion was bolstered by a group of small vessels towing barrage balloons. A similar deception was undertaken by boulogne sur mer in the Pas de Calais area by No. 218 Squadron RAF in Operation Glimmer. If you found the information in this video informative, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.